So hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at LAM Research. Uh, it's a semiconductor company and its ticker symbol is LRCX. Over the last year, it's up more than 150%. And this year already, it's up more than 40% going from 480 to $660. So we're going to be looking at whether this company is a buy. If you do enjoy, consider subscribing. It is free and it does help me out a ton. If not, thanks for watching anyway. On to the video. So what is LAM Research? So LAM Research is an American manufacturer of semiconductor equipment. The main activity is the development, production, and the sales of semiconductor, and they also create integrated circuits. So semiconductors has been in a lot of close attentions of investors. Uh, LAM Research is one of the companies in this industry, and it's shown a very strong re result in the first quarter of 2021, and has grown more than 140% since March of 2020. However, I believe the company still has more potential. It has ex it has excellent results compared to its peers, and its valuation model shows that it is pretty undervalued as of right now. Uh, the company specifically specializes in wafer fabrication equipment, or WFE for short, uh, and services to the semiconductor industry. It's one of the lesser known semiconductor companies, but its technology is used in almost every single chip on the market today. So uh, at the conference call in January, LAM Research's president and CEO, Tim Archer, uh, talked specifically about 5G. And he said, if we look similarly on the impact of the 5G phone, uh, phone market, we see that there's a 5% incremental demand in 5G units. And this has the potential to drive close to a billion dollars in incremental wafer fabrication equipment, which LAM Research specifically specializes in. Last year, the global smartphone, smartphone sales reached more than 210 million units, uh, but it's only just getting started. This year, 5G smartphone fail, uh, sales are expected to reach more than 530 million units worldwide. Uh, according to their most recent uh, investor presentation, they expect the WFE spending will be in the high 50 billion range in 2020. And for 2021, the spending is set to be between 60 and $70 billion. LAM Research is one of the top three players in the industry, and it is has 20% of market share, and it targets this to grow to 25% market share by 23-2024. LAM Research serves three main markets. It, uh, uh, it serves memory, foundry, and logic and integrated device manufacturing. Uh, memory is the largest contributor with 60 to 70% of its revenue, followed by foundry to 20 to 30% revenue, and logic and IDM contributing the rest. So semiconductors are used in almost all sectors of the economy. Uh, the industry and the world as a whole is moving towards more gradual automation, uh, which uses com uh, which uses products such made by companies such as LAM Research. Many, many familiar to uh, products that we're using right now are becoming more and more technologically advanced, in particular, the emergence of self-driving cars. Uh, the company is a leader, LAM Research is a leader in certain technologies, uh, more specifically deposition and etching. Uh, this is used when they're creating their semiconductor chips. Uh, the competitive advantage can be seen through their highest gross margins of 45%. They have a gross margin of 45% and an OCF margin of 26%, but also the amazing returns on capital. So the return on invested capital has been at 25% over the last three years, and the return on equity has been more than 50% uh, if you're looking at this year and between 30 to 40% over the years before that. So high profit margins, gross margins, OCF margins, and return on equity, uh, and their profitability selling their services is because of their monopoly on the manufacturing equipment for certain semiconductor processes. As previously mentioned, we're looking at de uh, deposition and etching. And because of this, they have an amazing pricing power uh, in the company. And the management looks to exploit this for, fu uh, for future revenue and profit. Uh, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the financials. So we can see the earnings per share consistently increasing from about 2013 onwards from about 0 0.66 cents all the way to $20 currently. The dividends also is pretty solid. Uh, however, it has a pretty low dividend of less than 1%, uh, but the dividend has been consistently increasing with a low payout ratio. That means that they can increase their dividends by a significant amount in the future. Their operating cash flow, their cap spending, and free cash flow are all increasing. So that's very good. More money is coming into the company, more money is being invested in the company, and more money is being stayed in the company as well. 
The return on assets has been consistently increasing, pretty solid at 21%, and the return on equity uh, is mind-blowingly 60% in 2020, and pretty solidly over 30% over the last few years as well. The net margin is a very healthy 25%, so that means off their revenue, they keep 25% of it as profit, which is healthy, for, especially for a tech company, which is investing a lot into research and development. They're able to keep a 25% net margin, even after spending a one and a half to $2 billion in research and development each year. Their interest coverage is quite uh, is actually pretty healthy. At 18 years, it's not too concerning, but their debt is quite high at a debt to equity ratio of 0 0.91. Their equity still comfortably covers their debt, but it is a it is quite a bit on the high side. So that is, that is one risk that this company does have. Its price to forward earnings is currently 23. If you look at to the market, whose price to current forward earnings is about 25, you're looking at it as a pretty cheap rate as of right now. And their PEG ratio of 1.4 is one of the cheapest in the industry, which means it's one of the cheapest, but also solidly fast growing stock in the industry as of right now. And we've already talked about how semiconductors uh, will be an amazing uh, growth factor in the future of the world. And LAM Research being a high, like one of the largest players in the industry, um, have trading at a pretty cheap price and growing at one of the fastest rates compared to their price is a very good positive for this company. The next thing we're going to be looking at is their technical analysis. We can see the company has gone from about $280 all the way back in the beginning of 2020, all the way to 662 to reaching a new high right now. Uh, you can see it's consistently been increased, it, increasing. It's not like the Tesla stock price. Here we can see it's consistently been uh, hitting a new high, then coming down to the 50 or 200 day simple moving average, and then repeating that over a few cycles, uh, going all the way to $662. Right now it is trading at a new high, so I wouldn't recommend buying. However, you can see every time it hits a new high, it falls back to its uh, 50 day simple moving average. Uh, in this case, the current 50 day simple moving average will be $560. Um, I wouldn't be surprised in the near future if there is a dip, especially with the high growth accelerant that the company has been going through in 2021. So I would recommend to buy the dip in the future. So just some final words, AI, Internet of Things and 5G are driving the demand for semiconductor chips all over the world. Uh, the wafer fact... The, uh, the WFE market is currently about 65 to $70 billion and is likely to grow at 6 to 9% year over year for the next decade. Uh, LAM Research is a leading player in the industry with a market share of 20%, and it, this is set to increase to 25% over the next few years. Um, it also expects to improve its margin significantly over the next two to three years. Uh, I believe that it's currently trading. Uh, the stock price is quite expensive. However, I would recommend to buy the dip in the coming few weeks, which I expect to happen. However, in terms of the PE, uh, the forward PE ratio and the PEG ratio, it's trading at a cheap price and is trading at much cheaper valuations compared to its competitors as well. So if you do choose to invest, make sure to do your own due diligence. And thanks for watching. Bye.